In this video, we create a PowerShell pipeline in Azure DevOps. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to my channel. This video picks up where the last one in this series left off. We previously went over Azure DevOps repos. Check out the last couple videos if you haven't seen them yet. In this video, we set up an Azure DevOps pipeline that runs a PowerShell script and PowerShell inline commands. Before we get started, please like, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content, and share with your friends. Become a member if you're so inclined, and check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and Hybrid Azure AD Identities at univee.com. The links are below, and as always, your support is appreciated. An Azure DevOps pipeline is a type of automation that supports continuously building, testing, and deploying to the cloud. It's extensible and supports multiple languages and platforms. It's a flexible automation solution for applications and infrastructure as code that fits within the Azure DevOps ecosystem. This video starts with creating a pipeline and then moves on to setting up simple PowerShell examples to highlight the basics of creating and modifying a pipeline. We go over running PowerShell inline commands and scripts as well as using variables in the pipeline. The best way to understand a pipeline is to see it in action. Let's get started. We'll start by going into the repo set up in a previous video. A link should be on your screen to that video. We just need a basic repo. We're going to add a new file called powershell.ps1 to the dev branch. And we'll add the contents. This is a simple script that accepts an input parameter and returns that as a message. It has a default hello world message. This is simply to test the functionality. Save it and commit the file and push it to the DevOps repository. Now that we created, saved, and pushed the file, Let's create a new pipeline in Azure DevOps. From Azure DevOps, go to the repo and the branch we want to run the build from. The same one with the PowerShell.ps1 file we just created. You may need to refresh for that file to show up. At the top of the page is the option to set up a build. This will create the pipeline. Click that. We'll use a starter pipeline. That gives us the basic pipeline a starting point for the rest of the configuration. Click Save and Run. Saving the file, we'll commit it to our DevOps repo. This step is just to see the default results. Click on the job. It lists all the steps for the build. Take a look at the Run One Line and Multi Line script. It simply gives us hello world and some other output. Let's go back to repos. From the repo, let's look at what the YAML file gives us. We'll open up Azure Pipelines.yaml. And one thing to note, this is a YAML file and formatting is important with YAML. An extra or missing space can break the pipeline. It triggers from the dev branch. Then it uses a Ubuntu Linux pool. That's the image it uses to run the code. Linux is supported for PowerShell 7. We'll leave it set to Ubuntu for our testing. We could switch to Windows if we needed functionality available in Windows PowerShell 5. Next, we have some steps that run the inline echo commands. We'll change this to PowerShell next. We could edit the YAML directly here or in VS Code, but there's an easier way. Go back to Pipelines, edit our pipeline, Now we have some more tasks on the right. To get started, let's delete everything under Steps. Next, we'll add an inline PowerShell command. Make sure the cursor is in the correct location for this step. It should be in a new line under Steps. That's where we'll create the next task. Under Tasks, search for PowerShell. Select the PowerShell task. We have two options, inline and file path. Select inline for this example. 
This will simply run lines of commands. Let's update it to indicate it's coming from the inline script. Take a look under preference variables. We can update error action and other preferences. Let's take a look at advanced. These are all options we can include with our PowerShell command. We'll leave these as default for this example. Click add. Now we have an inline PowerShell command task. One more step with this. Go to the end of the line that starts with task and hit enter. Just as an example, I'm at the beginning of the line. I want to add a display name. If I start typing display name, it does an autofill. I'll delete this and add two spaces. So we'll delete it and two spaces. Now if I start typing display name, it auto populates so I can tab to complete. This shows how YAML is sensitive to formatting. Display name can't be at the beginning of the line. Some formats like JSON ignore formatting, YAML doesn't. Update the display name with inline PowerShell in single quotes. That gives it a more descriptive name. Next, we'll add the PowerShell script task. Move the cursor to the bottom of the YAML file on a new line. If we didn't move the cursor, it would insert the task right after display name. From tasks, search for PowerShell again. Select PowerShell. Leave it as file path and add the name of the file. PowerShell.ps1. I'm not adding a path because it's in the root of the repo. If we had directories in the repo and the file was in one of those directories, we would have to add the path. We can leave the rest as default. Click Add. Update the task with a display name like we did with the inline task. We'll give it the name PowerShell script. Creating a display name helps with viewing the steps later. We finished updating it. Let's save the file. And this will do a commit. Go back to the pipeline main page. Notice doing a commit started the pipeline. We'll come back to that shortly, but for now, open up the new pipeline. On the list of jobs, click the most recent job. Go to Jobs. It finished running, and it lists each action for the pipeline. Notice we have an inline PowerShell step and a PowerShell script. These are the display names we configured for the tasks. Adding a display name makes it easier to view the tasks and troubleshoot if something goes wrong. Let's look at the inline PowerShell task. We have hello world from inline for the output. Now let's go to the PowerShell script. That gave us the default hello world output. The script will accept input. Let's add an input value next. Go back to the pipeline and select edit. We can update the message for the PowerShell script task by adding an argument. So under file path, Arguments, single quote, dash message. And then double quotes, hello world from script. What this will do is run the PowerShell.ps1 file, passing in the argument for message, hello world from script. That input would then be converted to output with the write output command. And that will work, but let's take this a step further. We can add variables to a pipeline and use them in the tasks. Go to the space right above steps and add a couple lines. We want one line above and one line below the cursor. Type variables followed by a colon. 
and you can tab to autocomplete that. Keep in mind if autocomplete doesn't work, there is probably a formatting issue. Hit enter at the end of variables, provide two spaces, and then type pipeline var followed by a colon without quotes. This is the name of the variable we'll reference later. Add a space after the colon. Add the new message in single quotes. Hello world from variable for this example. If this was a one word variable, we'd be fine with single quotes, but it's not. By default, only the first word is passed into the pipeline. It would stop at the first space after hello. To pass in the entire string, we need to wrap the single quote variables in double quotes. So we'll add a double quote at the beginning and the end. And make sure if two double quotes appear, you remove the extra one. Once it's done, it should look like what's on the screen. And we could continue with names and values if we add multiple variables. Next, go back to arguments in the PowerShell script task. We have a hard-coded value. Let's update this to use our variable. Variables in a pipeline are formatted differently from PowerShell. Remove the message hello world from script along with the double quotes. Replace that with dollar sign and then the variable name in parentheses. So pipeline var. Now the pipeline will use the variable we added. Before we go on, let's make one more change. Every time we commit a file to the dev branch, the pipeline will run. This may be what you want, but maybe not. It's a dev branch, so maybe code is getting checked in daily even if it isn't finished. We may want to stop the pipeline from running every time there's a commit and start the pipeline job manually if we need to instead. Go to trigger and delete hyphen dev. After the colon and trigger, put a space and type none. That removes the trigger for the pipeline. Save the file. And this will commit. If we go back to pipelines, the job isn't running, so the commit didn't start the job like it did last time. Let's run it manually from the pipeline option. Make sure we're on the correct branch and run. And we can go to the job and see it run. It'll take it a few seconds to start. We'll wait for it to finish. Once finished, go to the PowerShell script task. There's the phrase we passed in, hello world from variable. If you only see hello, verify the variable is wrapped in single and double quotes. That is how to create a PowerShell inline and script task, modify the trigger, and create variables in an Azure DevOps pipeline. I hope this helps you better understand what DevOps pipelines can do and how to get started with them. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.